So, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and to the special and solemn occasion. Today, we commemorate the 10th death anniversary of Kamala Datta, a short lived flower whom we have all forgotten. She was born on the full moon of Lakshmi Puja in 2005. She started in Ananta Parshala and uh, very unfortunately passed away on this day. 22nd August in 2013, at the age of eight. Today, we pay our tributes to her. And in doing so, we have one of her classmates, his grandish Sran Ghosh, chairman of Push Documentaries. He will deliver a lecture in memory of Kamala. He will speak today on the real museums of India, your grandness. Uh, thank you, Polomi, for that kind introduction. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I will be speaking on the rail museums of India. But before that, I would like to talk a little bit about whom we are remembering today, Kamala Dotto. Just a minute. So, Kamala Dotto was my classmate in Anandu Patshala Shanti Niketan, Vishabharati. She was born on the Lakshmi Puja full moon on, in 2005. She was a year younger than me. And we studied in Anandu Patshala at the same time, around 2008. She was a brilliant student, as at least for class one. And she always made up things and always got the right answer for any questions she was asked. We were best friends. I often ate tiffin with her and we sometimes exchanged our food. Pamela was a great supporter for me when I was facing severe bullying in my school. She left school in 2009 and we never met afterwards, but on the 22nd of August, 2013, Kamala passed away of skin cancer. Today, I pay my respects to my former best friend and would like to deliver this lecture in front of you today. So, we will be talking about the Railway Museums of India. There are nearly 40 rail museums scattered all over the country. Railway is a critical part of our country starting from 1854 up till today. So naturally, there have been rail preservations and these have led to the rail museums. We know that on the 14, 16th of April, the first locomotive of India, GIP number one, took a train from Bombay to Thane, which is regarded as the first railway train in Indian history. Starting from then, we fast, go fast forward to 1896. Here, the first rail, known railway museum of the world was established. It was the Norwegian Railway Museum in Norway. Norway's rail museum might be the first, but the Norwegian railway is not that strong or that big that it should go to be considered a huge thing. In contrast, in 1899, the Nuremberg Transport Museum which was established in Germany, became up to then the largest rail sanctuary in the world. I have visited Nuremberg and I've seen several important locomotives there, including Adler, the first train of Germany. But that's not the topic of today. So in our country, the first railway museum was established in 1977 with the biggest and the most important rail museum update, that is 
the National Rail Museum of Delhi. The locomotive you're seeing here is a part of that museum. Since then, there have been many museums scattered around the country, starting from Mysore, Kolkata, Chennai, Trichy, Gorakhpur, Bhuvaneshwar, Gwalior, and many, many more. Today, we are going to see about these museums. But before we begin, I would like to thank the people whose names appear in the screen who have all helped me in making today's paper a, su a success. Because as you can see, I myself have visited quite a number of rail museums in India, but naturally I haven't visited all of them. These people that you're seeing here have helped me in getting the pictures of these museums from all over the country. I'm very thankful to all of them. I hope some of them are watching this today. And I'm especially thanks to Aninda Dash, who died a few months after she sent me the pictures of Gorakhpur in a car accident. So our topic begins. First, we will talk about the large museums. These museums are bigger in size, have a great number of railway stock and other accessories, and these can be considered as very powerful railway museums. These include Chennai. Like here, we're seeing a YG class locomotive. There's also a DHRB class, a WCM class, and many, many more classes which make this museum a great success. We'll talk about some of them a little later. Here is the Delhi National Rail Museum in Chanakkapuri, Delhi. We have the Kolkata Railway Museum, where we are now seeing a YG class locomotive yet again. This is Mysore Railway Museum, the second rail museum of India. This particular image is very interesting because this is a car, a road car, converted into a railway wagon. This is a Austin car, an Austin car, which was transformed into a railway inspection wagon in the 1890s. So this is a very important milestone. This image is from Nagpur. And here in Nagpur, we see a great sanctuary of uh, narrow gauge locomotives and rolling stones, which is perhaps the best sanctuary in India. We'll look at a little detail about the Delhi Museum because here we see several railway seals, especially seals of the makers of the locomotives. Then we have several models, like here we see a WP class locomotive, a huge turntable, which is present nowhere else in this museums of India. A great number of railway stops and a beautiful environment and other railway accessories like railway badges, railway watches, railway seals and many more. So in my opinion, the National Rail Museum is the best in India. But we'll talk about that a little later. Now we're going to study medium museums. In this regard, we'll be looking at those museums who do not have a great many of number of locomotives or stops, but we see some that are there and they can be quite interesting. These include the Ajmer Museum. This image is taken by Sri Indrajit Choudhury. We have the Kuch Bihar Railway Museum, where we see this interesting track inspection trolley. This image is from Dhanbad. It is actually put, clicked by Shahib Ganguly. And this picture is a picture of the brake van of the rails 
And in this heritage park, there are quite a number of railway locomotives, brake vans, road rollers, and so on, which may not be very big, but quite attractive. Same is the case with the Gorakhpur Railway Museum. This image is taken by Aninda Dash. We have a great number of collection in the Gwalior. I mean, great number as in, in terms of media museums. This is also a fine museum in Hubballi, where we see diesel locomotives and coaches. An excellent media museum can be seen in Tinsukia. This image is clicked by Mahesh Agarwal. And here we see two locomotives. One of them is a steam locomotive, the YP class. We saw the YG class. The YG class is the meter gauge goods engine, and YP is the passenger engine. And this one is clicked by me. It is the, sorry, it's clicked by my mother who visited with me. And here we see the X class locomotives of Nilgiri Mountain Railways in Trichy. We will talk about these a little later. But for now, we are going to look at solo exhibit museums. Now, this is a term I invented. This is not found in any books. But I think the description is quite accurate, as in these museums, there are only one railway locomotive or coach where we see some interesting findings. Most of the time, these railway museums are placed just outside of a railway station. Such is the case with this locomotive, Tilottama, which is indeed a wonderful BK1 class locomotive that worked on the Bengal Dam Bakuda Damodar Valley River Railway. Same railway, same locomotive class in Bakuda. This is a ZE class locomotive from Baripada. This picture is taken by Vijay Kumar Dash, my Nodadu. This coach is the Bikani State Railway Royal Coach, and it is also a solo exhibit in the Rail Museum of Bikani. This is clicked by me, where we see the YG class locomotive in Guwahati Railway Museum, just outside of the station. This brake van can be seen in the Rail Museum of Kota. This is a Nayanpur diesel engine, and this diesel engine is still functional. It travels in a little line, which makes up this Rail Museum of Nayanpur. This is a very special Rail Museum, the Gitanjali Railway Shangrahalai, which we will discuss in our lecture later. But this class, this coach is very important as it was used by the greatest poet of India, Rabindranath Tagore. We'll talk about them, but let's move on now. This image is taken by me, and it is from the NJP Railway Museum. Here we see a YP class locomotive, and this engine is indeed a grand one. Now, dear viewers, we are going to look at several railway museums where the railway is actually functional. Most of the museums that we saw here have been those where static displays are preserved. But in the rail museums, we are going to see the railway is actually working and the working railway has given us this railway museum. Most important of these is the heritage local shed of Rewali. Rewari is a local shed two hours from Delhi. And here in Haryana, we see the locomotives of Fairy Queen and many, many more locomotives who still work. They can be run and they often do. They often change their places and they still move as one of the greatest sanctuaries of India. We'll talk about them. This image is from the Rail Museum of Ghum. We are seeing two lanterns, and these lanterns were used in the Darjeeling Himalayan Railway. This is the Karsium Railway Museum in the, in the DHR. In these DHR rail museums, we will see several 
railway tools, pictures, and other assets, but usually there aren't any rolling stock or locomotives because they're running quite nearby in the DHR railway stations. Same is the case with the Nilgiri Mountain Railway with its headquarters in Uti. This is a picture of the Uti Railway Museum where we see an X-class locomotive, which, is, which was one of the most important locomotives of India at one point and still remains an important narrow gauge locomotive class, which is still working on the Nilgiri Mountain Railway. These locomotives work on the mountain railways, so they're small, yet they're very tough. Same applies with the Z-class locomotives of Kalka Shimla Railway, where we see these locomotives were very tough, and the Baba Valku Rail Museum of Shimla is quite near the railway station. And here also we see several, you know, railway assets and so on. This is the same case with the DHR Museum of Sukhna. And there are other examples as well. So far, we've been discussing about railways. But the rails are not only used by the mainline locomotives, are they? They are also used by trams and metros. Unfortunately, in our country, there are not a great number of museums in uh, focusing on these entities, but the Metro Museum of Delhi and the Sharonika Kolkata Tram Museum is all, it can be considered as quite interesting railway museums, and they are very useful in learning these details. Now, the final category of railway museum. That is, we are going to see where the locomotives are not real. Here we see model railways. Even modern railways can perform their own railway museums. This can be seen here, such as the Bhuvaneshwar Kalinga Rail Museum. This is the model of the GIP number one locomotive we talked earlier, the first locomotive of India. And it can be seen in the Chhatravati Shivaji Railway Terminus in Mumbai, in its little museum. By contrast, this is the last locomotive of India, the Antim Sitara WG class. This one can be seen in Ghusawal. There are many other models in Ghusawal as well. This model museum is from Lonavala. And this is the largest of them all, the Joshi's Miniature Railway Museum of Pune. In these museums, we see several locomotives, tracks, trucks, coaches, wagons, and many more. And some, like the one we are seeing here or the one in Lonavala, feature several kinds of local life. You'll see cities, mountains, rivers, lakes, train sheds, and so on. I remember when I visited Germany, I saw one, one like this in Nuremberg. That is also a museum. I mean, that museum, the second oldest in the world, where we see the railways and models. There are other uh, solo exhibits too, but I'll talk about them later. Now we will be looking at some interesting objects which are one of a kind and can be very unique, such as the BNR Garrett. The BNR Garrett is the largest locomotive India has ever seen. It was built around the 1940s, and these Garrett engines have two sets of wheels, and the boiler of the locomotive hangs in between and the water tank and coal bunker are placed on the either side. The Garrett locomotives were first built in 1910 and they're very strong locomotives. This Garrett, the BNR Garrett, can be seen in the National Rail Museum of Delhi. There is also one that is still running in Kharagpur. This is very important because here we see the DC current locomotives. Of all the electric locomotives that you'll be seeing running in the rails today, these are 
AC current locomotives. And there may be some mixed locomotives with AC and DC current, but single DC current locomotives are very rare in India as they are not running today. One of these is this one, the WCM5 preserved in Chennai. These locomotives ran on DC current. This image is taken by Trimati Shunanda Dr. Sharma, where we see a road roller in the museum of Thanba. See, in the museums of railways, there are not only railway objects, there are great many of things that are connected with the railway, such as these Garrett road rollers or the Garrett traction engines that we'll see a little later. This one was built in 1895. There's also one preserved in Kolkata and also one in Rewari. Here in Delhi, we see the first class of locomotives built in India. This is the F class locomotive built in 1870. And this is the first class built in India with parts from Britain and was built in Ajmer. They worked for many years. And one of them can be seen in the National Rail Museum of Delhi. I'd like to also mention that a model of this locomotive can be seen in the Museum of Ajmer itself, thus ensuring a great legacy. This is me, but that's not the point. We are going to see about the fire engine we see behind me. This fire engine belonged to the Mysore State Railway. And this fire engine was built in 1931 by the Dennis Brothers and Company. Now it can be seen in the Rail Museum of Trichy. Another fire engine can be seen in the National Rail Museum. This one, built in 1914, belonged to the Nizam State Railway. As you can see, it is a vintage design, but a very grand one, and is in display at the NRM. This is a very unique locomotive. It is also seen in the NRM, and here we are seeing a yellow locomotive. It may not be very entertaining at first, but the locomotive is actually fireless. We know that the steam engines burn the a boil the water and thus their steam produces the energy. But here you're seeing this locomotive has no fire. It is done with hot materials, no doubt, but no fire. Thus, these kind of locomotives are very unique. They were first built in Germany by the Hens Shell Company. And this Hens Shell number 35620, I think this one is in the National Rail Museum. This image was taken by my friend, Srimati Shunandini Bhattacharya. Here, we see a traction engine. A traction engine is a locomotive that runs on the rails. So, uh, sorry, they run on the ground. So these museums, these engines are often preserved in railway museums. We can also see one in the Kolkata Rail Museum. This is a road roller from Gorakhpur. The picture is taken by Aninda Dash. And this is very interesting locomotive, for it is the smallest railway engine India has ever seen. It was built in the late 1890s, and its class is A. It was built in Glasgow, Scotland, and it was named Hassang. Hassang is placed in the National Rail Museum as the smallest locomotive of India. And this locomotive can be also seen from the roads. Whenever I go to Delhi, I prefer to go through that road so that I can wave at my pal Hassang. Now, we come to a critical topic now. A GC class locomotive is not from India. After partition, it went to Pakistan, specifically East Pakistan. So it served there for many years, but in the 
Indo-Pakistan War of 1971, this locomotive was sent to India for espionage. The engine came, but was captured, and hence it never returned to Pakistan. And even today, this locomotive can be seen in the Railway Museum of Kolkata. And here, it is still written on its tender, East Pakistan Railway. I doubt if any kind of these locomotives can be seen in Bangladesh, modern day, where, we, where the East Pakistan Railway is written. But India has one, and it is a great treasure of this country. This is the Patiala monorail. Uh, we know that in the 1890s, the Kundala monorail valley was established in, the, in Kerala. That was the first kind of railway locomotives that were monorails introduced in India. But that system did not survive quite a long time. After it was deceased, in 1905, I think, I don't clearly remember, here, the Patiala State Monorail was built in Germany. Germany built four of these monorails for the Patiala State Monorail Tramway, built by the Maharaja of Patiala. He ordered these locomotives, and these locomotives had one coach attached to it, and they arrived in India. What's interesting about these locomotives is that they have only one line. And that one line takes the engine. For supporting the whole thing, two supporting wheels are added on the right side of each train, on one on the engine and one on the coach. We have heard that the Patiala Maharaj liked to travel in his gardens with these monorails. It is worth mentioning that the Patiala State Monorail Tramway in the National Rail Museum is still functioning. Every Saturday, it gives rides to tourists and enthusiasts in the NRM. <clears throat> Speaking of NRM, we also see these there. They may not seem very railway looking at first, but there are railway assets because there are ancient porters trolleys. These belonged to the 19th century, and these were used by porters. Contemporary porters trolleys may seem very cheap and ugly, but these porters trolleys even had a special majesty to them, which, which makes us pay us our tributes. As I was talking about this coach, this coach is a railway saloon with 12 wheels. It was built in 1909, and this railway saloon was used by Rabindranath Tagore. As we know, Tagore was the greatest poet of India, and he built his own ashram in Shantiniketan. But in 1941, his health deteriorated so much that he had to leave Shantiniketan, never to return, and go to Kolkata. In this journey, the East Indian Railway offered this coach for Rabindranath. It is visible in the Gitanjali Rail Shangrahala of Shantiniketan, West Bengal, India, where we see this coach. And this coach has several beds, furniture, toilets, and many more. This locomotive is a very famous one. Its official name is WCN1, but it is actually called Sir Roger Lumley. The white DC current mixed or the WCM locomotives were the first class of locomotives who were built to run on Indian broad gauge lines. This locomotive along with its brothers arrived in India in 1930 and they performed the duty of the first mainline electric locomotives. The first one of these, Sir Roger Lumley, named after the governor, can be seen in the National Rail Museum. Okay, this is not a railway asset, but it is also very appropriate in a railway museum. It is from Mysore. And here we see the an old steam-powered car. 
It was built by M.E. Tithers in the 1890s. Very few of these remain. So in the Rail Museum of Mysore, this is a very special attraction. And finally, the most famous locomotive of India. We are talking about the Ferry Queen. The Ferry Queen was built in 1853 in England. It was supposed to be the first locomotive to run in India. But when it was being delivered to India, it was mistakenly shipped to Australia from England. So by the time the Ferry Queen returned to India, we see that it was uh, its first record was broken by the GIP number one. So the, but the Ferry Queen has still remained in service and is still running today and is known as the oldest working steam locomotive of the world. Ferry Queen is a 222 locomotive, a well tank, and is indeed a grand locomotive. It can be seen in the Rail Museum of Rewadi, the heritage local shed of Rewadi, and is still running. I would like to add two keynotes in this subject. That is, the Ferry Queen has a competitor to become the oldest working locomotive of the world because there's another locomotive and express in Tamil Nadu, which is also the same class as Ferry Queen. And it also has a claim to be the oldest working locomotive. Ferry Queen's claims are stronger but the Express is also no, not far behind. And it is believed either this was inspired from the Fairy Queen or the Fairy Queen was inspired from this. So which one is the oldest remain a mystery. But broadly speaking, the Fairy Queen is regarded as the oldest working locomotive of the world. And the second point is quite tragic. As in, when we see Fairy Queen, the second locomotive of India, a question arises that where's the first one? And that I'm afraid to say has been scrapped long time ago. So long that GIP number one doesn't even have a photograph. We only have a stamp and two scale models made for him. But I'm very sorry to say the GIP number one is no more. And indeed, in most countries, when the first locomotive is either withdrawn or scrapped, a working replica is produced. That, unfortunately, hasn't been the case for GIP number one. And we have zero traces of the first locomotive of India. Now let's move on. I'll be talking about Rewadi, just what I mentioned before. Rewadi Heritage Local Shed is a locomotive shed in which we see several locomotives which were drawn but preserved in Rewadi and they still work. This is the largest such sanctuary in India. Here we see several locomotives like this one, although this is a British one built in England and was shipped to India. Its class is called YG. But then we have later Indian locomotives such as these, Ashoka, the WP class locomotive. The, <coughs> the WP class locomotives were the primary passenger engines of India since the 1960s. These locomotives were built by the Chittaranyan locomotive works. And three of them, Ashok, Azad, and Akbar, can be seen in the Rewadi Hedges local shed in working conditions. This is a YG class locomotive. We've discussed about this class late, uh, before. There are three YG class locomotives that can be seen in Rewadi. One of them is this one, which is called the Sahib. Then we have a, num, a YG class named Sultan, and there's another named Sindh. These YG class locomotives are indeed majestic. Okay, this is the last steam locomotive of India. Just a minute.
This locomotive class is called the WG. It stands for White Goods, Mainline Goods Locomotives. This one is called the Antim Sitara. And Antim Sitara was the last steam engine built in India. It is worth mentioning that the last steam locomotive of Britain was named the Evening Star. So this engine has a special reference to that engine as well. Rewadi Lokoshed is indeed a wonderful experience. And the working steam locomotives here can indeed be astonishing. We've discussed about railway engines so far. Uh, one thing we all notice when we talk about railway trains, that the importance of rolling stocks are often overlooked. I doubt very much if any railway can survive without having cars or trucks. So here we are with some examples. This coach is the coach of the Patiala State Monorail, the one we discussed a few minutes ago. And here this coach is attached to the engine with one monorail wheel and one supporting wheel. This, this is made of wood and can be seen in the National Rail Museum. This is the Mysore State Railway's Royal Coach. It is a saloon with four, two four-wheeled bogies and it is a grand coach. So is this one, a relatively small one, but here this locomotive is the coach of the Prince of Wales. When Albert, Prince of Wales, who would become the King Edward VII in 1901, visited in India around the 1890s, he traveled in this coach. This coach is therefore mentioned as the Prince of Wales coach, and this coach is seen in the National Rail Museum. When we talk about rolling stocks, we often have to go to cranes. Indeed, breakdown cranes are essential parts of any railways. That is because in any accident, delay, or other such activities, the railway cranes come very useful. There are many important railway cranes in India, but I'm showing this one, which is from Gwalior. This is a Nagpur Museum's rolling stock. This is a huge saloon of a narrow gauge railway. There are four bogies, and it is a very long coach. It can be seen in Nagpur. This is a very important coach, as this is the Vice Regnal Saloon. In this saloon, the Viceroy of India traveled. It is indeed a majestic coach preserved in the National Rail Museum. Now we'll be looking at how these museums are functioning. In this context, I would like to show two pictures. One is this one and one is this one. And these show that in Delhi and Mysore, how toy trains are running all the times in the museum complex, thus providing an interesting experience for the tourists. However, there are some negligences in our museums as well. Very few of our country comes without negligence. And here we see many flaws. Such as in the Kolkata Railway Museum, it is very dirty. It was once even loaned for a wedding party. And there are dirt everywhere. The sales counter are closed. The railways, railway locomotives' colors are withered off, and many more. And uh, I myself suffered that there was a couple kissing each other in the railway museum, which is not something you should do in a railway museum at least. But still, I would say that the rail museums are pretty much well done. Here we understand that maintaining such huge properties is not an easy task. And I think Indian Railway is doing a good job in preserving these rail museums. Now we'll be looking about at, at some railway tools. As you noticed, 
in the long journey we have taken, there are a very there are a great number of local uh, museums where we see that the museum is full not filled with actual rolling stock, but it is made of railway objects such as railway tools. So these railway tools can be very interesting. We'll look up we'll look at a couple of them now. This is the palki. This is not exactly a palki, but rather a chair with handles which were carried by men. Before the Darjeeling Himalayan Railway was established, this palki system was used there, and the Borobabus of the company would travel on these. They were carried by four men. Uh, this is seen in the Ghum Railway Museum. Now, this is a railway measurement machine, weighing machine. It is a very old one and can be seen in the Kolingo Rail Museum. Of course, in any historical railway places, there are rails which are very old and they since have been ripped apart, but kept there as relics. These include the Rail Museum of Ghum, where you see these kind of older rails. Another picture from Ghum, where we see a railway typewriter. The railway included many clerks, and these clerks used typewriters. There were no computers back then. And these typewriters were very elegant and very expensive. So some of them can be seen in a museum, such as one in Ghum. Another image, I think I've shown this image, but it's still relevant to railway lanterns from the Ghum Railway Museum. Uh, these lanterns were used by guards and they would use cellophane papers of uh, red and green, which would show the red signal or the green signal. This is also a lamp perhaps used by an engine. So our journey is basically at the end, but we would like to discuss about how these rail museums are relevant today. Just a minute. So what we see here, the railways are an essential part of India since so many years. That's no denying about that. And indeed, in other countries, in America or England or Japan, the people travel by cars or buses, and the railways are mostly made for goods traffic. But in India, at least, with a population largest in the world, the people often travel by trains. I have seen images that a pilgrimage train is going and people are literally hanging tight on the rail, uh, on the railings of the locomotives, where we see the locomotive, the people are hanging from them. So these rail museums are indeed very mesmerizing. Uh, now the question arises that are these very relevant to common people? I would say yes. And that is because when we, at least for me, when I grew up, I never saw steam engines. I traveled to Darjeeling when I was very young and saw some small rail music, railway machines that I saw there, steam engines, but hardly any can be seen today. And thus, I would say, at least for the younger generations, the railway museums can be very enlightening for studying steam engines, but not just for children, for other people, for us students of history, we go into the museum and we wonder how these worked. These locomotives go back, take us back to their own times. And we really, indeed, we are, what should I say, we are spellbound by looking at them. And not just that, not just railway objects. We also see other things, such as railway tools that I, some I show, showed. These tools are, you know, something which 
is never used today. It can't even imagine that one would be writing with a typewriter today. But th this, these things are preserved there and they take us back to into a several years before place where we see typewriters, hand lamps, and the seven forearm signals and so on. So that, and that way, this is very interesting in historical terms. Also, any history student who has studied history of India has to study a little about the railway museums of the India of India, because indeed, in the at least in the National Rail Museum, I'm not talking about all the others, but these big museums are something which show a huge panorama, not just one locomotive, but a series of locomotives make up who make up Indian history. This is something every history student has to conquer. And so therefore I would very uh, positively suggest everybody to revisit the nearby railway museums around you. And as for other common people, that too is a, I think real museum is an excellent study. Not everybody gets to see everything, but when we go to the museums, we just wonder that our grandfathers traveled in these coaches. And imagine if there wasn't a puffing engine in, in Pothet Machali, would the film be a, as grand as it is? Same applies with the railway scene of Shonar Kella, or many, many others. So indeed, for everyone, I would recommend you should visit a railway museum, not just Kolkata, not just Delhi, but as many as you can in understanding local history and understanding the history of India. Just a minute. Thank you.